Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Andrew Friskup. I'm the Serial Extension Plant Pathologist at NDSU. And today I'm going to give you kind of a small grain disease update and what we're expecting for the rest of the year in the Langdon, Northeast uh, North Dakota. To best summarize what we saw early on is we did not see a lot of fungal leaf spots. You know, we're used to scouting for them, seeing them arrive early, but this year is a little bit different. We didn't, we didn't have those long due periods that really promote the infection of those pathogens, so we had more of a later disease onset. Also, with the common practice of putting a fungicide down with that herbicide, most of our early disease type of issues were, were less common as, as far as what we've seen in previous years. Um, with the Northeast, there's one big exception as, a, as opposed to the rest of the state was the appearance of rain and frequent rain. So the one thing that we have to start thinking about is what is the fusarium head blight risk this year? If you want to look at a state, uh, a more of a state impact of fusarium head blight risk, the greatest risk uh, beginning in the middle of June, starting in the middle of June, has been in Northeast North Dakota. And that risk has only gotten higher as we start moving to the 4th of July weekend. And I know there's a lot of heading out wheat and I know there's headed out barley. And we have to start thinking about when are we going to put down that fungicide? So the two things that I always want to mention about a fungicide, one is know what you're using and when to apply it. The best products to use out there that provide the most amount of suppression of the disease are Prosaro, Corumba, Miravis Ace. Uh, those have routinely always provided about 50, sometimes 60% suppression depending on the year. The next thing that we should focus on is when should we be making those applications? So if you think about starting with wheat, the best time to make that application is when we start seeing the onset of flowering or when we start seeing those yellow anthers start ext extruding from the center of the head. Now the common question always is should we be too early or too late? Uh, granted sometimes you're just forced to one decision but our research over the last five to eight years have suggested that being a little bit too late is better than too early. Now you're still getting suppression regardless if you apply too early or too late but we're seeing a little bit more on the back end of flowering. And the best way to describe that is if your wheat flower, if your wheat field is flowering today, you have about seven days to make that application to get good disease suppression, but also protect that yield. Now, when we look at barley, we have a little bit of a different timing change, and that more has to do with is that barley does not uh, flower outside of the boot. The best time to make that application as barley was when you have complete full head emergence. And that application uh, window again if you want to talk about it lasts for about seven days and in some ways you could think about as what stage is barley is how long the stem is below the head um, in this case my estimation is this is about three or four days after the beginning of full head and just want to stress that this is still a good time to make an application if you weren't out if you weren't able to get out there already so the two big things is what you're using and when to apply it the other thing that I want to focus on is one disease I think that we're going to start seeing here develop um, in, during the first week of July, and this is bacterial leaf streak. Now when we think about bacterial leaf streak, there's, there's a couple things that I want to point out. One is we're starting to see this disease occur more frequently in the state, and the other thing is it's highly associated when we start seeing strong thunderstorms. So this past couple days we have seen uh, th thunderstorms rip across the state, and that is more or less a prime time when we're going to start picking up bacterial diseases. Uh, bacterial diseases, as the name suggests, do not respond to fungicides, so there's nothing we can spray on them that works effectively, and we are confined to using less susceptible varieties. Now if you use the variety guide, you're going to see a 1 to 9 scale. Certainly anything that 5 or below is kind of what you want to market as far as if you're running into bacterial leaf streak problems. The biggest thing is, is this can be a severe yield limiting disease. As you can see on this sample, you see the streaking, you see the necrotic, and sometimes yellowing streaks running up and down the leaf. When you start hitting the flag leaves, you can start, you can start thinking about losing yield potential. Last year on our most susceptible varieties, we documented 50, 60% yield loss. Uh, on the more resistant varieties, they were kept minimal to one to 5%. So resistance definitely does pay. As we move forward throughout the season, uh, my key messages for Northeast North Dakota is continue to stay on top of your field for uh, scouting, not only for disease, but also for growth stages to see when, when or if you're gonna have to make that fungicide application. The other thing I always wanna encourage is I hope you guys have a very successful and happy harvest. Thanks for your time, and if you need to reach out to me, work locally with your county extension agent, or you can reach out to me directly.